hello everyone good morning good afternoon anywhere you are in the world welcome to business analysis simplified yet another episode and i am yours truly ola opime i hope you all had great amazing not so good whichever uh, category you want to put your week i hope it went well the good thing is the week is behind you right now. The weekend has just started. How about you re redefine for yourself what you want your weekend to be? Enjoyable, relaxed, whatever it is. Define it and then walk towards it. Because if you're in the paid employment, money is almost here. Money is almost here, guys. So try as much as possible to enjoy the weekend as against just going with the flow. Be intentional about enjoying your weekend. <laughs> I just pulled <laughs> you that into the conversation <laughs> without any glitch at all. I'm getting good at this. <laughs> and I was talking and I was adding you without being distracted. That's good. That is really good. I, if you mm -hmm. don't praise me, I'm going to praise myself right now. <laughs> the funny thing is, I don't know what I was thinking. It was, it, it was too smooth. Like, I was still like, oh, what's going on here? And then, boom, I was in. I was like, what? Indeed, you get better at things when you persist. So <laughs> the more, I think the more I'm doing this, the better I'm getting at it in pulling you in. So, uh -huh. yeah. I'm no longer, well, I'm getting away from the sentence technological se phrase, technologically challenged to technologically expert, expert, uh, whatever. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Leave, leave that alone. Let's <laughs> move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Business Analysis Simplified. Today, today, guys, we're going to be talking about, um, yes, risk, oh. risk analysis. <laughs> I know you probably don't want to, I don't know why I'm excited about risk. I know you probably don't want to hear about risk or you are thinking what could be exciting about risks that she's going on about, but oh, no. hanging there. So let's talk about how organizations use risk or risk analysis, and then we'll hand it over to uh, our co-moderator <laughs> to help us analyze how risk analysis can be applicable to oh, our yeah. everyday living. Mm -hmm. So in the business world, and I think this is general too, when you hear the word risk, the first thing that comes to your mind is negative outcome, right? You yeah. just think, oh my God, this is probably uh, uh, harmful, or this will probably have a negative outcome, right? Why? Ah, oh, that is so because, of course, the definition of risk is the probability of of an event occurring. Yep. That's that's the Webster de de definition, actually, the probability or the likelihood of something occurring. And then it went on a little bit to say, uh, most times negative outcomes. Mm -hmm. And then I supported it and said, um, although yes, we like to think of risk from the negative point of things, which we will call threats, actually, mm -hmm. we'll call them threats, right? But it would be better to look at another perspective, which is a positive, the potential of having a positive outcome, which we will, which we will call opportunities, yes. right? So mm -hmm. in every situation, there is a good side and there is a positive, uh, a negative. Look at me, look, doing just good and good. There's a negative side and like there's that. a positive side. Like that. So, I like it. <laughs> is that good or good? Yeah, there's a negative side and there's a positive side. So, so for instance, if a company wants to implement a software, right, mm -hmm. there are a whole lot of things that could go wrong in that software implementation and so what they will do what the project team should do i don't know if they actually do it what they should do is to identify the list of things that could go wrong mm -hmm. possible risks right and then you know start you know, coming up with some mitigation plans if in the events that thing that risk actually occurs and becomes becomes an issue so when they do that they only identify negative th things that could have negative outcomes. What I'm saying or suggesting is, as against just doing the negative ones, put the positive mm -hmm. ones too, because there are opportunities. And when you focus only on the negative, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, 
chances are they would happen. But when you mix the two, right, you are exploring a full spectrum of possibilities, right? It's not just focusing on the negative. You're focusing on, well, you're focusing on both negative and positive because there's always, you know, like a coin, there's a, there's, there are two sides to it. Correct. There is a positive and there's Absolutely. a negative head and tail. Okay, so that's how organizations use it. Uh, in when we're talking about risk analysis or identifying risks, how help us, KDO, how, how can we apply risk analysis to our everyday living and benefit from it? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say is when we're talking about risk or, an, or analyzing risk, right? Mm. It happens, it's something we do every day, whether consciously or unconsciously. And I'm going to start on, on a humorous note that, you know, the optimist sees the cup as half full. The pessimist sees it as half empty. Can you just excited that there's something in the cup? <laughs> like that. <laughs> there's something in the cup. Mm. Just be grateful, right? So when we're looking at things, when you're looking at, particularly as, as it has to do with our individual lives, mm. we, we're faced with issues. We're faced with decisions, right? Especially when we're faced with decisions, because this is when it becomes very key. Before you go left or right, you want to think through it. If I go, go ahead with this, what are the risks? What's, what are the opportunities? What are the threats? Mm. Right? Um, think for instance, I, I like to focus for this morning, and it's because it's something that's been on my mind for a while, the, the rate at which marriages are breaking down, the rate at which People are being are like, oh, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, right? I know that we're still going to talk about some other things, maybe next week. But for this week, we're talking about that person that is about to get into a relationship, mm. right? Or right. you are analyzing your relationship and you're saying, ah, this guy, for instance, is a medical doctor. What are the traits? Your friends are telling you, ah, hey, you want to marry a doctor? This guy will be gone, 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 never at home. In fact, ha, you will likely be, it looks like my pendant is blinding you. Am I imagining it? I, I think I'm getting used to it. Now I've looked at it and I've blinked, <laughs> blinked, blinked, and then I've adjusted my okay. <laughs> that I'm going to be now. asking you for that brand, the brand of the necklace you're wearing, because I want to blink, blink too. Oh. Uh, but yeah, after, <laughs> offline. Okay. So take it offline. I've stopped it in, so that way at least the 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 um the threats are reduced <laughs> going blind. anyway um as i was saying your friends are saying to you oh my god you want to marry a medical doctor you're gonna be home by yourself this guy will never be home this guy will never date he will never that be it as it may yeah maybe he will have to put in long hours or you're married to somebody in the it world they, they do it it comes with the um what what's it called the it's terrain. just part of it comes to the terrain, right? That you, they're going to give put in long hours, mm. right? My mom was was a teacher, and she was always she left at seven thirty. She was always back or seven fifteen or something. Like it was a well oiled clock. She would be back home by three thirty. But if you're married to somebody who is like uh, you are you ex person who designs who is a, who codes somebody with a medical doctor. If you're married to an engineer that goes offshore. If you're married to a military guy, a mil they're gonna be gone. Those that are serving the country, yes, they're gonna be yes, be gone for sure. They are gonna be gone. There is no two ways about it. So the question you want to ask yourself is, what are the threats? I know. In fact, you don't even need to ask yourself the threats. Your friend will fill you in on the threats. Yeah. Right? You're literally gonna be you're gonna be a single bother, you're gonna be this, you're gonna be that, you're gonna be that, because you're gonna be home by yourself, there may be some loneliness there, blah, blah, blah. But what are the opportunities? Mm. You fall in love with this person and they never hear from you that they want to be a doctor, they want to be uh, they want to go into the world of IT. Or maybe they they didn't even plan on going to the world of IT. Maybe they were just your regular Joneses, you know, working as a customer care somebody. And then all of a sudden you're realizing that going to IT is, is a smart thing to do. So now they're going to IT. Mm. I know it's, you know, some people will be like, yeah, but he works from home, maybe doesn't work, from, whatever that is, but they're gonna put in long hours. So now it's a decision that he is making or she's making for the family. So what are the opportunities in there? Number one, this person, you're helping your partner achieve their goal because they told you from the get go. And I, I'm not sure of what else can be more fulfilling than helping somebody you love to achieve their goals. The other thing or some other thing to think about is this person, if he's a medical doctor, for instance, he's helping 
the entire universe. I know they don't treat everybody in the world, but they are making our community a better place. If it's in the military, they are, they are, they are going out there to protect us, to defend the integrity of the country. Mm. I know that sometimes the words are meaningless, right? You're like, oh my God, this is so stupid. Why are they doing this? But this is what they've signed up for. It's not fun. It's not easy, but that's what they've been called to do. So those are the opportunities that you want to look at there. What are the blessings in these things? And then when you do mm -hmm. that, especially if it's something you cannot change, it just gives you peace of mind. Because what are you going to profit from, you know, just thinking, oh my God, this coffee is all half empty, half empty, half empty, half empty. You're going to be miserable for the entire of your life. Well, we've got mm. to be objective in the way we look at things. Let's even leave the heavy dose of we're talking about marriage or whatever it is we're talking about here. If you are the one that, decide, that needs to maybe decide on the path forward as far as what your future is going to look like, I'm talking about career-wise, right? Mm. You are the one that has to decide. Or you want to go somewhere and you're thinking to yourself, oh, should I go, should I not go? Is it worth my time? Is it not worth my time? Or you're thinking, okay, maybe I need to, I don't know, anything. Anything in this world that we get to do, there are going to be opportunities, there are going to be threats. But for the most part, we need not focus only on the threats. Because there's always a good, like you said, there are two sides to a coin. So we want to look at, you know, the other side of things. And if it's something you can change, by all means, and if you think, oh my God, I can't handle all the threats, mm. then, then, then by all means, right? But if, if it's something you can handle, then again, now you're making informed choices. So that's the way mm. I look at it. That's the way I look at life. You want to have children. Children have their own opportunities. They have their own threats. Like big time. I can see the way you're smiling. It, they are adorable when they are young. But even then, look at the, the process of, of being pregnant. You're carrying mm -hmm. under individual in your, in your, in your tummy, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how you're going to feel. You don't know if you're going to have to spend, stay in the hospital for the next six, three months. Or maybe you're going to be okay. Even if you had one and everything was fine, doesn't mean the second pregnancy is going to be exactly the same yeah. way. Yeah. But what are the opportunities there? At the end of the day, God help us. Everything goes well. You, you, you hold this human, this little human in your hand. And when they smile and cool at you, your world becomes all right. Oh, yeah. I mean, having a baby, thank you for that analogy. Having a baby opens you up even to a new world of opportunities because you get to imbibe some of your values, some of your virtues into that little, little human, right? And you see them grow. You see them grow. And I'm going to get to a point now. You see them grow. And all of a sudden, they want to be out of the house. <laughs> And you okay. really want to hold all the time and say, no, 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 hold on, hold on, don't go just yet. But you know, that beauty and that fulfillment that you get, that you get to nurture someone from infancy to that age of responsibility, it is amazing. Oh my God, it is amazing. Yeah. You know, but the other thing to look at, another way to look at this is even in that journey of motherhood or parenthood, from pregnancy to maybe adulthood when this kid or when this child can now take care of themselves it's not always going to be opportunities 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 it's going to be a mixed match like one day you look at this baby and it's queuing and your heart is melting the next minute it's pulling and it's thinking and like oh my god i just changed that diaper Why? how can you how could you right it's going to be a roller coaster of emotions and sometimes because particularly as mothers we it, it comes with the territory you just take it like that but what about our relationships with our spouses? It's not going to be opportunities, 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 oh, no. opportunities, oh, opportunities. Oh, no. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then one day you wake up, you look at this guy, you know, and you're like, oh my God. He's the best thing after sliced bread. And then the other day you wake up and you're like, what am I even doing? What was that? What was that? I thinking. <laughs> And vice versa, vice oh, yeah. versa. Because oh, yeah. I'm not a, what we would call a professional counselor, but I think between the two of us, Ola, 20, yeah. 21 years in marriage relationships, I think we we have a seat at this table to have this little, Yeah, Yeah, we have some things to, to <laughs> offer when it comes to that uh, topic, for sure, yeah. And then, and then we've somehow managed to still not kill our spouse. Like, life is good. Everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> the, the, and, and vice versa, because I know mm-hmm. that sometimes day to day look at it, they're like, oh my God, you know? Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it, it's just a roller coaster, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Some mm-hmm. days you, you, you feel like I've made the best decision of my right. life. Other days you're like, what, what in God's name was I thinking? Oh. I know. So, Katie, I have a question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, when when you are faced with a situation or a scenario, and you're saying, okay, let's let's analyze the the things that have the potential for negative outcomes for this situation, and the things that have potential positive outcomes. What happens? What do you do if the positive? Oh, sorry, the negative outweighs the positive. Do you just give up on all the positive to you you identified, or how do you then move forward from there? And I okay. can't think of uh, a particular analogy now, but yeah. It depends. And I'm going to go back to the marriage and um, relationship. If you're not yet married and you're looking at all of those things and you're doing your analysis, honestly, at that point, you know, they say that uh, a broken engagement is better than a broken marriage, 100% every single time. But you need to be sure that you're not just fixated on the negatives, right? Mm. Okay, so. Maybe for me, it's not a deal breaker if this guy eats with his mouth open. <laughs> Some people will literally drop dead if that happens to them, you know, their spouse. So maybe it's not a big deal if this guy drops, drops his shoes. Or, I mean, you, you guys go out and when he gets into the house, even when you're still in that dating phase, he opens the door, removes his shoe, and you can already tell. That they just boom, boom, they should, they won't fly, they won't fly. It's not going to change when you're married. It's that ring will not now begin to arrange the shoes for him. I'm just <laughs> saying that. <laughs> so, I guess what I'm trying to say is this if it's pre marriage and you're doing your analysis, ensure that you're not fixated on the, um, on the negatives. You look at the positive, you look at the negatives. If the negatives outweigh the positives, maybe then you want to seek the counsel of. A trusted, trusted person, and that you know that they have a good head on their shoulder, mm. not the one that they are always talking about being a slave queen, you know, wearing this, wearing that. You know that they are very, very superficial, but somebody that has a good head on their shoulder, and that over time you've trusted their counsel. You could mm. go talk to them and say, Okay, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking. They can help you, you know, distill that. But if you looked at it and the negatives outweigh the positives. Sweetheart, Bill, you are not yet married. Mm-hmm. Because there are some things that will not change. You have to look at this guy and be okay with him. And you have to look at this girl and be okay with her the way she is right now. Mm-hmm. If she doesn't, mm-hmm. she comes to your house to pay a visit and she, she, she walks by your mom without saying hello. When you're married, she's not going to say hello to your mom. It's this, it, nothing's going to change. And if mm-hmm. she may not even see it as a big deal. Maybe in their house, they just come into the door. Nobody greets anybody. The way they say hello is is, is food ready. <laughs> so it, it may, it's, it's not inherent. I mean, when we're talking culture to culture now, it may be, oh my God, what is that? But in some culture, it, it's okay, it's acceptable. So you have to decide, am I willing to live with this? But if you are already married, this is where you need to be grateful that there's something in your cup. Mm. Because now you're married. I know we're going to be talking about management risk management next week so you don't want to miss that episode we're going to distill all of that but we're saying that when you're looking at an issue you're looking at even your child you're looking at your car does it make sense to drive to work or does it make sense to take the bus those are analysis if you take your car nobody is sweating on you no you're okay you can determine when you get to where you're going you don't know who's good i mean you can determine who sits beside you but if you have to go take the public transport. Somebody may sit beside you that you, you are not comfortable with. There will be a lot of noise in the, in the vehicle. Mm-hmm. But you may be like, okay, I'm going to get to work without being tired. I'm, I can put my earpiece in my head and listen to a book or a podcast or something. You can't do that if you're driving, right? You can't read a book, a physical book, if you're driving. So you're looking at the threat and the opportunity. Okay, does it make sense? You have a meeting today. You don't want to come to the office looking rumpled and, you know, whatever. But you also don't want to drive. So at that point, maybe it would be to take an Uber if you can afford it, but it's analyzing the situation and going with what makes more sense. And but- I like, I like the, sorry, I was gonna say that I like the fact that you talked about uh, 
seeking someone else's perspective, a trusted person's perspective, because organizations do that too. No. Maybe they're oh, yeah. not speaking person. Well, they have consultants to come in and yeah. then, uh, you know, take their opinion. But in analyzing risks or in identifying risks for a particular situation, maybe the software implementation that we talked about, they will mm -hmm. bring together a group of people. So it's not just one person identifying those risks. It's a group of people because what you can see uh, in terms of risk, another person might see it as an opportunity. And so yeah. talking through it actually helps. So uh, uh, borrowing your idea of talking to someone that you trust, a trusted friend to help them, maybe they could help you see some opportunities that you are not yeah. seeing that yeah. would actually make the scenario better is really cool. And then when we're talk talking about the issue of a trusted person, remember that I also say that they have to, because not enough that you trust them. They must have a good head on their shoulder, and you know that. Mm. They must, because that is really, really key. Trusting them is one side of the, uh, the side of the coin. They must balance that with having, and they should have, just have a good head on their shoulder. That's all that there is to it, right? Expand, you, for instance, expand on that okay. a little. For, for instance, in my family, we're very close-knit. I talk to my younger ones, you know, like I would talk to a friend. But let's say I'm the first. We have a lot. She's smart. She's mature. She's all of that. But I can trust her. When it comes mm. to some issues, she may not have experience. So talking to her may not be helpful for me. But if mm. the tables were turned, she could come to me because she knows she can trust me. And she hopefully knows that I have a good head on my shoulder. <laughs> right? So that's what I mean. Sometimes it could be friends. Like you and I, you know, we always bounce ideas off each other. But yeah. there are some people that are found in coaching and mentoring that you know that this friend of yours, let's say, for instance, your goal is to, which one happens most? Either, you know, increase your income by mm. having the side hustle. And you know that this friend, she doesn't like stress at all. So when you even started mentioning the fact that, oh, I'm thinking of having a side hustle, she looked at you like, and it's not like she's any crazy great but she's just okay she doesn't want stress she's looking at you like what 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 are you talking about now what do you want to do? if i even hearing you talk about that she's already stressed mm. so now if you're thinking okay i want to start um uh what now the one that's common now nowadays is becoming a makeup artist or fashion whatever whatever i want to go into it you already know that when you go to her, she's not even going to have the patience to sit down with you and look, listen to your threats and opportunities. Yeah. Her heart is already closed because she's like, oh my God, this is this is stress. Mm. So even though you trust her, but you also know her that it is not just something she's open to, right? Right. Then it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Or for instance, you're having issues with your spouse and you have an auntie that is really trusted, but you know that she can't stand men because she just thinks that they are a bunch of crazy people because of mm -hmm. our experiences. Because of our but experience. she's a good person. Mm -hmm. She would always help you out whenever. So if you now go talk to her about your spouse and say, ah, auntie, this is what's happening. Yes, you trust her. But you're yes. not going to get yes. an objective, right? You're not going right. to get anything objective out of there. Or you have another friend that the husband doesn't take care of the family. She's been the one spearheading everything. She's good. She's loyal. She's trustworthy. So when you go to her and say, ah, you know what's going on? My husband did. You already know she's biased, that men are lazy. They will not help. They will not this. So maybe you're not mm. to a face. Mm. And what your friend wants to say to you is that, okay, maybe how about we support him, you know, to finish this course that is going on. That is Because historically, he's been there for the family. He's just mm. right now. He's, he's taking up a program. Because you said that we need to increase the family income. So now he can't earn as much anymore. You know, so just sometimes we just need somebody to help us see and balance things. But I realize that most days, I mean, these days, most people, they go look for counsel in the wrong places. Or they, like they are, or, or, sorry, mm -hmm. I can't hear that. Yeah. Or they go look for the counsel that they want to hear. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They're exactly. looking for someone to validate, validate something that they're bringing as against just being objective and objective. seeing the whole full spectrum of possibility that we've been talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to end on this note because I know that time is fast spent. Right. When you are analyzing your own life, you have to be objective. Because I, I know that the times are tough now. A lot of things are happening 
Africa, ten people from Africa is complaining inflation, inflation, but it's all over the world. Even mm -hmm. here in North America, a lot of things are happening. The other day, somebody was saying to me that when I got to this country two years ago, spaghetti was um, did she say eighty nine, eighty seven cents? Mm -hmm. Now it is two point something. You know, so that is like over almost over two hundred percent. She was saying, right. and it's everywhere. So there is the tendency for us to look at our lives and feel short. The tendency is for you to analyze your life and feel demoralized. What I do and what I want to offer our listeners is I have what I call the, my book of remembrance. It's like journals, but I only write mm -hmm. amazing things in there that has happened mm -hmm. to me. So whenever I am looking at my life and it seems like the, it's, the cup is half empty, I go to my book of remembrance. It, ah, that's a really good it does end encourage me so when you're journaling journaling about it, some people call it a grateful journaling so mm. you, anything you're grateful for you write it down so whenever you feel like your cup is half empty guys you can go back there and it encourages your heart because right now more than ever we need to be encouraged we need to see the good in ourselves good. i'm not saying pat yourself at the back for not doing anything but be grateful for what you have be grateful for how far you've come be grateful for your journey your life is Mm. It's not just about tricks, tricks, tricks. There are opportunities there too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Yeah. KDO, thank you so very much. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to borrow that uh, gratitude journal. I just journal generally everything that happened in the day, whether positive, negative, but I'm going to have a separate one specifically for positive things. So that that will mm. be my book of remembrance to you know to reminisce on reminisce on when things are not really really picking up good that's good okay so to our audience borrow learn still whatever you want to do with all of this information that we've shared and be intentional apply them to your everyday living so specifically today we talked about threats and opportunities not just focusing on the negative outcomes of every situation uh suspend your 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 reaction for a second or two, uh -huh. identify the good that could be in that situation. And then based on that, you could decide which direction you want to flow towards. Okay, yeah. Uh, again, analyze your your ability or your the yearning that you have in your mind right now to cross into IT. If you want to become a business analyst, look at the pros, look at the cons. Mm. And I can assure you that the pros will outweigh the cons Absolutely. for sure. <laughs> yeah. And then reach out to KDU and I will be there to hold you by your hands and go get you to the other side that mm -hmm. you want to be. Okay. Uh, until next time, we're signing out right now. Let's say yeah. bye. bye. Mm -hmm.